Hello, Nella. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you and we can also see your screen. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hamid Jamil, medical physicist. So today's session is about total body radiation, uh, AQH experience. So uh, in, in this session, I will discuss about the practices which uh, we currently use in AQH. So before moving forward, I just uh, disclose a statement that uh, I don't have any relation with someone who is doing marketing or reselling of healthier goods So these are the content of my presentation. Uh, introduction of total body radiation in which I will just cover the uh, brief, brief uh, clinical aspect of total body radiation. And covering of total body radiation in which I just uh, in detailed discussion about uh, technical aspect of total, total body radiation. And then we move towards the uh, treatment workflow in our clinical uh, scenario. And finally, we, I will discuss in vivo dosimetry, which uh, we will use in total body radiation. So introduction of total body radiation. So as the name suggests that uh, we are treating the whole body of the patient or we are treating whole uh, body of the patient with, with the 10% dose in homogeneity, which means uh, we have to deliver dose uniformly to the patient. So this 10% window is according to the AAPM report because uh, we are talking about the 2D based uh, TBI in which uh, we mostly discuss about the patient, uh, the body should be uniform. Uh, if we look, uh, can you see my cursor? So if you look the head and neck region and leg region, so the separation always, uh, uh, lesser than the separation of the groin, separation of the umbilical, separation of the armpit. So we need and we need some uh, dose compensator in those region in which uh, tissue deficiency or tissue deficient regions. So we have to deliver in order to deliver the uniform dose in that region. We use uh, dose compensator in such regions. So I will show you later uh, uh, what compensator we are using in our clinics, uh, our, our institutes. So uh, what are the indication in clinic, uh, clinical situation? What are indications that uh, we, are, uh, we are doing total body radiation to the patient? So these are acute lymphocytic leukemia, chronic and acute uh, myelogenous leukemia, thalassemia, plastic anemia. So as you see that leukemia, uh, thalassemia, these all are blood-related disorders, which means uh, we are delivering, uh, we are uh, delivering, the, uh, the, uh, we are giving the treatment to such patient who basically uh, facing the uh, blood-related disorders. So it is about the blood-related uh, disease. So in what TBI does? Okay, so it's basically help or it basically uh, use as a conditioning regime to, uh, to support the chemo in BMT transplant, so bone marrow transplant. So as we know that um, our bone marrow is the hub of uh, uh, blood cells. So we need to treat, uh, we need to transplant the marrow uh, with the help of TBI. So what TBI does, uh, it suppress the patient immune system and uh, reducing the chances of rejection of stem cells transplant. It also eliminate the cancerous cell within the patient. So it's the, uh, it's the intention of total body radiation. So commissioning of total body radiation. So as I uh, early said that I just, uh, uh, briefly discuss about the clinical aspect and in detail I will discuss uh, the technical aspect of the total body radiation. So as the uh, AAPM report TG17 suggests that we, sh uh, we should take uh, some uh, special consideration uh, about the physical aspect of the treatment, like uh, what treatment technique we have to use in order to deliver the uniform dose, uh, what energy can we have to use 
and similarly we what treatment distance we need to deliver the total body radiation and at which rate dose rate we have to deliver the dose and what shielding uh, what what uh, vital organ we have to shield during the treatment so these are the physical aspect and we have to look all these aspects in uh, our uh, in during the planning uh, during the commissioning of total body radiation so there is no any standardization of the treatment techniques worldwide uh, because uh, some of them are um, uh, using sweeping beam techniques some of them are using appa techniques some of them are using bilateral and some of them are using sliding couch but which technique is best which technique is best uh, which give which gives us the dose uniformity to deliver uh, we, we give, gives us the best benefit to the patient so in the sweeping beam, uh, the patient is lie down on a couch and a beam completely sweep to the patient and completely treat the patient. Uh, in APPA technique, a patient is uh, standing in front of a beam and uh, in half treatment is uh, delivered via AP, AP side and half treatment delivered via PA side. So uh, the whole treatment covered in APPA technique. So, Similarly, in bilateral half treatment, half dose deliver from one side of the patient and by flipping the patient 180 degree or rotating the patient 180 degree, we deliver half treatment to the patient from another side. In the sliding couch technique, uh, beam is static, but a patient lay down on a couch and couch is automatable. Uh, sl uh, sliding inside the bunker and patient receive the complete dose uh, while beam on. So these are some techniques, but uh, most uh, dominant techniques uh, which uh, people are using in their facility are APP and bilateral techniques. So I just in, uh, confine my uh, discussion to AQH practice. So we, uh, we are using here bilateral treatment techniques since 2008. As uh, you can see the picture here, what technique we are using. So we choose the energy as a function of patient separation. So the, it's depend that uh, what separation some patient have and we use the dose uniformity chart for it to choose the best energy for them. Uh, here we use dose rate uh, uh, which we are having range from 13.2 uh, to 13.5 centigrade per minute. So uh, there are lots of uh, literature who say, uh, in which, uh, in which uh, it is quoted that dose rate should be minimum in order to minimum numbers like uh, 15 cg centigrade per minute or less than 10 gray per centi minute, uh, centigrade per minute in order to reduce the chances of rejection of uh, engrafting of uh, stem cells. So before moving uh, the dosimetric aspect as per guideline, so I just introduced the what uh, Linux having capability of TVI in our facility. So we have two Linux DHX uh, six six X and eighteen X, which is uh, which having two energies, and similarly TrueBeam, which having six uh, X, ten X, and fifteen X. So in the in my presentation, I covered the true beam commissioning, which, uh, uh, which we done uh, in uh, first quarter of 2020. So if we look the dosimetric aspect, according to the guideline, so these are the beam uh, data, which we need, which we need uh, to commission the total body radiation uh, setup. So in which uh, first we need the percentage depth dose, which is uh, which gives the how dose changes, how dose changes uh, as the uh, as the uh, beam penetrated uh, within the patient, and similarly beam profile, which gives that how how beam uh, shape at the extended uh, SSD or extended distance. So we uh, we measure horizontal and vertical both profile for it. Similarly, we need beam output at which dose rate dose deliver at the extended SSD. So we need all three data. 
So, and we also measure all three data. So for the percentage depth dose, we used uh, 60 by 30 by 30 centimeter phantom with rice bowlers for lateral scattering, as you can see here in the image. In the center, we have 15 by 15, uh, 30 by 30 by 30 cm, one uh, 30 cm uh, cubical phantom. And bilateral, we have 15 cm, uh, one cm slab, uh, which uh, accumulated to 15 cm. So we it total made 60 cm in length and 30 cm in height and 30 cm in depth. So this is a phantom. And this was a phantom which uh, we use, or uh, this was a setup which we uh, which we uh, used. And uh, and uh, we placed the setup at uh, 500 cm SSD with 1.2 cm beam spoiler, beam spoiler uh, as a beam degrader for the treatment setup. And uh, we measured the data from zero to 30 cm. Okay, so the field size was 40 by 40 and gantry was to 270 degree and collimator was 45 degree. And uh, we measured PDD for all three energies, 6X, 10X and 15X. So for the measuring of uh, PDD, we use Marcus chamber. So why Marcus chamber? We use Marcus chamber just for the shallow depth, uh, sh uh, shallow fall of, uh, of the beam, because uh, we need to measure the surface dose. We need to measure the surface uh, doses near surfaces. So uh, we uh, that's why we use parallel plate chamber or Marcus chamber. So these are the uh, measuring data, which we, we measured. Uh, the six MV beam have a uh, DMAX of uh, two mm, and 10X have uh, one CM, and 15X having the DMAX of 1.2 CM. So if you, if you look, uh, we, we basically uh, took the step size of one mm at the, at the shallow depth. And then after one CM, we increased the, the step size of two mm. And then after two CM, we increased the step size of one CM. So at the shallow depth, we need, because of uh, build up region, we need more data points. So as you can see, uh, as you can see here in the graph, the blue one was, uh, the, the blue one is six X, six X profile and the uh, yeah, uh, orange one is 10x and uh, and the gray one for 15x so if you compare the 10x and 15x profile so you can't uh, differentiate uh, there is no any major difference in both of them uh, both of them so it's mean that uh, uh, we can uh, rather switching to 15x we have to use 10x instead of 15x in uh, in uh, in the treatment of total body radiations. So after PDD data, we acquired uh, beam profile. So for the beam profile, we used uh, same setup, but this time we just switched the semiflex chamber and we placed the chamber at D10 because uh, at the at at a uh, uh, lower depth uh, we have the we have according to TG 106 uh, there is a there is a lot of uh, uh, electron contamination contamination so we need to use uh, place chamber at D10 and uh, for beam profile we use 5 cm step size from the CAX and we use uh, like I will show you just uh, with my cursor we use to measure from from the other side 20 cm from the other side like from if you can see my cursor, I uh, we measure from we start measure, measuring the data from there, from here to there. Okay, so we just uh, reduce the uh, reduce the hectic job because uh, TG uh, 106 suggests that uh, if uh, if the beam is uh, uh, uniform or beam symmetry is stable, you can you can replicate the half beam profile. So we just uh, took the uh, 20 cm uh, other side and then just replicate the beam profile. And this profile uh, is, uh, you can see this profile for 6X 
and this profile for 10x and this one for 15x. But uh, if you look the symmetry and flatness of 6x, the flatness and symmetry was uh, 1 cm, uh, 1 percent and 0.6 percent respectively. And for 10x, the flatness was 1.3 percent and symmetry was 0.6 percent. And similarly for 15x, uh, the flatness was uh, higher, uh, which is a 3 percent deviation and symmetry was 1 percent. So this is this is the horizontal beam profile. Now I move towards the vertical beam profile. So we measure the vertical beam profile from uh, 30 cm upward and 30 cm downward from the CAX. So because uh, we know and uh, we uh, no one uh, no one uh, uh, no no patient having a separation greater than 60 cm. So we have to understand the profile at the extended SSD. Uh, and 60 cm, 60 cm good enough uh, information give, gives us uh, good enough information about the beam shaping at the extended SSD. So we, uh, if you, the first uh, graph shows 6x beam profile and uh, the flatness was 1.2% and symmetry was 1%. And for the 10x, uh, the flatness was 1.8% and symmetry was 1.2%. And uh, for 15x, the flatness was 3% and symmetry was 1%. So this is about the vertical beam profile. Now uh, we're moving towards the dose output. So we measure the relative dose output, which means that uh, we measure uh, dose output at uh, nominal SSD. And then we measure the dose output at extended SSD. And then we uh, take the ratio of both of two and then we got this dose uh, peak dose rate. For 6x, the dose rate was uh, 0 0.0429 uh, centigrade per uh, centigrade. Per. And for 10, for 10, uh, for 10x, uh, it was 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0441. And for 15x, it was uh, 0 0.0450. So here you can see the this picture shows that uh, we measure the data at extended SSD, and in this picture we measure the data at nominal SSD. So what we did in this, we expose the same cable length at the nominal SSD, and we use a farmer chamber for it. So we did uh, a detail uh, detail uh, measurement about the cable effect and stem effect uh, during the commissioning of total body radiation in tubing. So for the tubing, so uh, we expose the different cable length to understand the cable length as a uh, yeah, cable effect as a function of length. So here you can see what we did. We, we expose different cable length. We just wrap, uh, uh, there's no any difference either we, uh, we we just uh, wrap surrounding of the phantom or we just place uh, directly directly on the top of the phantom. So it doesn't uh, impact anything, anything on the output. So we measure with both uh, two way. So here you can see in the data, the cable length when uh, we use for nominal SSD, uh, we change the cable length from zero to 20 and then 50, 100 and 200 and finally 300 centimeter. And we expose all the length, which include the uh, stem and everything. So for the marker chamber, the deviation, the output deviation up to 20% we observe. Whereas in the pharma chamber, we observe that the deviation was 0.9% uh, at the extended SSD for the maximum cable length and 0.6% for the nominal SSD in the case of farmer chamber. So it was, a, uh, it was our, our observation during the commissioning of total body radiation. So uh, I just uh, move forward uh, just to show you treatment workflow in uh, our clinics. So in our institute, so First uh, patient come to admit in BMT department, and then BMT department communicate with our red on team, and uh, and and 
in uh, talking about the simulation and simulator simulation is uh, staff uh, book the CT CT scan uh, for the CT scan patient and then uh, when the CT scan done uh, when the C CT scan done the file uh, hand over to the physicist to calculate to MU calculate based on CT data and these CT data which we are using just to inc incorporate the inhomogeneity uh, to measure the separation of the uh, throughout the body. And then finally, after calculating the MU, we delivered the file to the treatment unit and finally treatment delivery took place. And after treatment, the, we, we monitor uh, we monitor dose and then analyze those doses, those doses. So admission of patient. So this, uh, this is the protocol for particular patient. And uh, and the day first, when patient admit to the BMT department, and day first, the stem cell infusion uh, step can take place. And then after, uh, on this day second, uh, uh, day, day second uh, is the rest day for the patient. And on the day th uh, third and fourth, uh, the chemo cycle given to the patient, and then uh, and then uh, on the day five, patient come to the red on for the total body radiation, and there onward we deliver the whole treatment course to the patient. So after uh, after admission of patient on the day fifth of the patient uh, come to come to simulation, and here you can see uh, here you can see we use. Uh, for the immobilization of the patient, we use backlog uh, for uh, their immobilization. And here you can you can see that uh, the uh, the bake for the uh, tissue tissue deficit region uh, for the tissue deficit region. We use uh, the rice bags or rice bolus for it. And for head and neck region, we also use rice bags, uh, which is uh, which is in case in uh, this jig. You can see here this jig is uh, is. Uh, adjustable according to the patient separation. And here you can see, here you can see the picture. These are the point on which we, we basically, we basically uh, do in vivo dosimetry. So these are the simulation steps. Uh, first we call the patient for the simulation and then use the vacuum lock for the immobilization for the patient. And then we measured the separation of umbilicus and groin, and why we and then take we when and then we take the average of the uh, of the of both two separation. Why we taking average of both two separation? Just because uh, as we know that uh, the groin separation always greater than the umbilicus separation. So we have to average out both two separation just to just to average the dose distribution in both region. And then we assemble the jig uh, with four CM addition to this average major separation. And then we make the lower body as the same separation of the groin separation. And we use uh, silver nitrate just to reproduce the in vivo dosimetry uh, film uh, placement points during the course of the treatment. And for that, we use silver nitrate and uh, we mark uh, on the predefined anatomical side of the patient. And then for the CTs, CT scan, we place a uh, ball bearing on dot uh, on on those points just to uh, just to just to see in our uh, planning system uh, just which reflect the uh, which reflect the radio effect nature of the ball bearing. And then we fill up the rice inside the bag and place rice bag in between leg just to compensate the uh, tissue deficiency in, in this region. And we also use a uh, polythene bag uh, just, to, uh, just to differentiate the rice bag with patient, uh, uh, rice bag for the contamination with the patient skin. And uh, we also make sure that uh, the vac load shouldn't uh, increase uh, the separation of uh, greater than 75 centimeter because of uh, our CT donut diameter limitation. So we note all this separation. We note all this separation and uh, we 
document all the this separation in a in a physical separation paper. So after uh, preparing for simulation, we we, uh, we the patient go for patient go for uh, CT scan and uh, there uh, the uh, CT scan done with a uh, CT scan done with a point five centimeters slice thickness and here i can uh, i uh, i show you just uh, two different setup previously we are using a small bags and we stack up these bag in the head and neck region here you can see the air gaps there are too much air gaps whereas you can see in the modified version which we, uh, we currently use in our uh, in our practices so here you can see the uniform material uh, placement uh, surrounding the head and neck region and similarly in between the legs. So this is uh, some modification which we did uh, in the last two, uh, three to four years. So then after CT scan, the file uh, received by uh, physicists and he or she uh, calculate the MU based on CT data. So CT data and uh, in CT data, what we calculate, we measured basically water equivalent depth, which uh, which basically incorporate the inhomogeneity within the patient. So we we basically talk about the water equivalent depth, uh, which uh, our eclipse system having the feature, uh, which directly calculate, uh, which directly calculate uh, from the CT data. And we put all the water equivalent uh, separation uh, in a monitoring sheet. I will show you later about uh, and little bit uh, give you the idea about the monitoring sheet. And if, then after putting the all separation, we evaluate the doses from lower to higher separation. Like if, uh, and like I will show you now. Let me do. Oneza, can you share the MU calc sheet? Yes, we can see. Okay, so I'm talking about the WED calculation, uh, WED separation. So this is the MU calc sheet, and this is the in vivo dosimetry analysis sheet, uh, which is uh, which uh, include the in vivo plus uh, MU calc both type of data. So the w the, the, uh, the major wd from the ct data we put all these all location wise here and all the separation here and uh, we also also put the entrance and exit uh, separation here uh, exit and uh, exit and entrance depth here and according to entrance uh, entrance and exit depth the pdd uh, pdd assigned to the uh, to that particular point and then uh, the, uh, the, the sheet uh, directly calculate the dose for that particular point. And finally, we, we, uh, finally we just uh, seen the uh, total dose at that particular point, uh, which is the point of interest for the in vivo dosimetry. So these are all the, these all are the expected doses. And when we deliver dose to the patient, we always want to, uh, we always want to the dose which uh, reflecting here, which are the expecting doses, uh, always reflect in their delivering doses. So these are the uh, this is this one is a sheet which we use uh, during the 
treatment of the total body radiation patient. And finally, after delivering the six and eight uh, fraction, we finally compared the or analyzed the whole treatment course of the patient, what uh, standard deviation, what interfraction deviation, what intrafraction deviation uh, we uh, just uh, found in the treatment. So this is about the MU calc sheet. So I move towards uh, my presentation. And then I'm talking about the, the, the evaluation of the doses from lower to higher separation, uh, which uh, we found in uh, our MU calc sheet. If, if we found uh, some uh, doses are lower or higher, we just uh, change our setup because there is a provision in our setup before treating the patient because uh, we know uh, CT gave us uh, uh, that much confidence about to modify the setup in TVI's treatment. So here you can see the, uh, here you can see the uh, dose uniformity chart, uh, which we use for the selection of the energy. And here, we, here, uh, here you can uh, see the dark uh, black points which highlight that uh, these are the point of uh, intention over for the in vivo dosimetry. And then after calculating the MU calculation, the patient uh, go to treatment. And on the day of treatment, we attach the uh, small EBT3 films, which cut in size of uh, one, one by 1.5 centimeter. And then uh, we uh, and for the dose monitoring uh, for the dose monitoring and then we reproduce the same setups according to the simulating uh, before and then after completion of the treatment we detach the film uh, from the patient and after uh, 24 hour we read all the exposed film and I will show you the flow of the our scanning and reading of the uh, in uh, of the in vivo dosimetry radio radiochromic film procedure in our facility. So in vivo dosimetry, uh, in vivo Latin uh, is a Latin word which means uh, with uh, within living, which means that uh, we are attaching something directly to the patient, and we are uh, in vivo dosimetry, which means that we are directly uh, involving the patient during the dose monitoring. So direct, it's it's a way of direct measurement on the patient skin or and and the verification and verification more precisely uh, while delivering the treatment to the patient. And it is also independent of treatment procedure because uh, it uh, doesn't uh, impact on the treatment. And we compare the predict uh, we compare the major dose uh, with the predictor one as uh, I show you in the, in according to the, our city data. So what dosimeter we are in our facility? So previously we are using, uh, we were using, previously we were uh, using a diode dosimeter, uh, but there is no any stability, uh, which uh, our senior observed during the measurement of the dos uh, dosimetry and this, uh, the facility then switched to the radiochromic EBT3 film dosimeter. And now uh, we are ready, uh, we are getting very stable result from the EBT3 uh, radiochromic films. So now, now it is we are using uh, radiochromic film as a dosimeter for the in vivo dosimetry. And uh, how we proceed, uh, how we uh, proceed with uh, what procedure we are using with the radiochromic film. We cut the film in the dimension of one by 1.5 centimeter and use for in vivo dosimetry of TBI patient place like uh, this. You can see a picture, uh, a small chip place in the ankle of the patient. And similarly, uh, different location of the patient, we place the same chip just to monitor the dose distribution throughout the body. And then after placing and exposing the and delivering the treatment, we scan the film with the Epsom uh, 1000X scanner, which, uh, which we have in our facility. And then after scanning, the, we read the film uh, with the film, Pro, film Q Pro software. So our facility have our own scanning protocol in which we use, uh, we, we use uh, these steps like you can see in the picture. 
uh, we we on the scanner before half an hour before uh, scanning the uh, scanning uh, for warm up and then we uh, we we uh, warm after warm up we just uh, uh, preview two, two to three times and then uh, we use uh, gloves uh, to attach the film and to place the film on the scanner bag and we are, we use some transparency on which uh, some, uh, one template uh, uh, which have uh, numbers according to the anatomical region and uh, we place uh, it also so here you can see the dimension of the film and these are the setting of the our scanner uh, which is it's uh, some 1000x scanner so uh, how we read uh, how we read our film so we read our film uh, using film Co film qa pro software as i told you before and uh, in in that software uh, we use uh, we first need a reference uh, we just we need a reference uh, uh, od curve which gives uh, which basically we make uh, according to the known doses, like uh, you can see here, we expose uh, the film with that uh, with that much MU, which which uh, bl which gives uh, blackening on the film with uh, with this do uh, with, uh, with according to the uh, this dose, which uh, you can see here. Uh, the first uh, film chip is zero, which is background. The second one is fifty two point nine centigrade dose, and the third do uh, third film having blackening according to the 71.74.1 centigrade dose and fourth one 103.8 centigrade dose and fifth one 145.5 centigrade dose and sixth one 203.7 7 centigrade dose and sixth one 285 centigrade dose and up to 398.8 centigrade gray dose with that much blackening so optical density basically the, the blackening curve which gives that uh, how much blackening the film is or how much black in the region is so uh, we always uh, ma made this uh, uh, this reference curve uh, with the with uh, with the, with the 20% of the dose prescription with uh, uh, the calibration range should be plus 20% of the prescribed dose we whenever we made this calibration we always uh, expose the film with 20% more dose to to them to in order to to uh, to to lie the our unknown unknown film uh, within the range of the calibration so this this uh, this uh, slide basically tell you about the uh, one of the patient who received the total body radiation and we talking about the interfraction dose statistics and here you can see the repeatability of the setup and the average dose of the setup and the maximum and minimum dose. And we have the deviation of what we are expecting and what we are delivering with the maximum of deviation of 5%. So it is a, it is a very, very happy moment for someone who are basically, uh, uh, who basically, uh, getting the better result with their uh, their improvement in the techniques or treatments so this is about the dosimetric results and finally we uh, we are uh, now ending the now we are ending the um, our session so these are these are the, our future goal in which we uh, we have uh, we have a plan to explore the vmat tbi because uh, in the whole discussion, you, uh, you see that uh, I'm talking about the 2D base uh, TBI. And we are, we are always up to improve ourselves uh, with uh, we, ourselves and our practices. Uh, so this is all, all about my presentation. Thank so, you so much, uh, Hamid Bhai, for your such an informative uh, presentation. I when muted the participants, they can unmute themselves and can ask questions. Hello, Hello. Uh, sorry, you can continue. Uh, 
No, no, Shehbaz is fine. So you can continue, please. Okay. Uh, Hamid, it was very nice presentation. Um, I just have a quick question uh, regarding the number of patients that you are having at AKU. I don't know if you already told it uh, during the presentation. Just wanted to confirm. Uh, uh, in the beginning of the presentation, we uh, we we show the numbers to all participants. It's almost mm -hmm. around fifty plus patient. We uh, like per year in AQH. The sorry uh, per year, right? No, no, no per year. No, so far we uh, treated uh, fifty plus patient uh, oh, from okay. the two th since since two thousand eight. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Uh, and uh, uh, the film dosimetry, have you, uh, I don't know if some of you might have uh, compared the diode with the film dosimetry, the in vivo. Have you did that uh, or? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I... So like, how are the results? Our, 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 se our senior uh, already did uh, this thing, but uh, I don't have experience of uh, comparison of diode and because at that time I'm uh, the facility is using uh, fin dosimetry. Oh, okay. It is switched to fin dosimetry. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for sharing all those details. It was nice listening to you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm here. This is Rahim from, from Nairobi. How are you, Rahim? How are you? Thank I'm you fine. so much. You took me back 10 years. Then we did the okay. similar project, me and Abdul Wase. And I was just, uh, uh, just give me a second. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Sorry, what? Uh, yes, yes, I hear you. Yeah, actually, I was somebody. Somebody was calling me. Uh, now I have a couple of questions, rather, and a few comments, maybe. That you were regarding mostly my focus is on the measurements because we have done so many measurements and we were facing so many issues at that time, typically regarding the the outputs. So my first question is uh, about the the PDD measurements. You were using the Marcus chamber. And I know you, you, you told me the reason. Although the PDD is, you know, it's a relative measurement, it doesn't matter. This makes a big difference. But have you ever tried to compare the PDDs measured with the markers with the another chamber just to see? Yes, uh, yes, yes, with the semiplex chamber. Yeah, but, so uh, there was, but, was but, there any division? But uh, we started uh, the measurement from uh, 5 mm from the surface. So this was the, we don't have the information of the buildup region or some surface region doses, but the profile not completely over our left to each other, but um, near close to each other. Okay, that's nice. Yes. That's nice. Now, secondly, uh, which, I, I know you must be using the TG51 for the output measurements. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, so the, the uh, question we, is, you know, I, I have seen your presentation that you were taking a ratio with the nominal and the extended. The problem with the extended using TG51 is that the KQ value, which is given in the TG51 is for the yes, nominal yes. SSDs. So that's the, the biggest issue, how you, how you are incorporating that but, thing? Yes, uh, in, T, uh, in TG51 amendment file, uh, you, uh, amendment report, uh, there is a theoretical method to calculate the KQ, okay? Oh, so there is, we, I have not seen, okay. 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 So we can uh, on the uh, on the theoretical formula. We use the theoretical formula for the calculation of the KQ at the extended SSD. Oh, that's nice. And uh, maybe the third question. I don't know. At that time, we were trying to find out the p polarity, you know, but the deviation was fifteen percent, and even Dr. Shirley was not in position to answer why it was that. So have you tried to find out the p polarity on extended SSD? About polarity. Yeah, P polarity. Okay, of so uh, we we also measure P, uh, absolute dosimetry. We also done uh, uh, absolute uh, dosimetry at the extended SSD, but uh, we just found uh, uh, the polarity around two percent division, two two to three percent, not uh, fifteen percent. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, All right. I will share. I will share uh, the data with you. 
Uh, yeah, no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. But I got it. But I mean, at that time, that was an issue because uh, the output which was measured two to three years ago before I was joining. And then when we recommissioned the whole Linux 2, and the deviation was up to 15% because of the P-polarity. So that's fine. So uh, did you have you configured the Eclipse for the extended SSD? Uh, but we are, uh, we are, it, it is in our consideration uh, how we can uh, do this. Okay, but still without even configuring the Eclipse, it can give you, I think you can do the comparative analysis with your results because it's using the modified manual method and those model based algorithms. That's fine. Yeah, now the last it. question. Mm. Uh, we are planning to use the T box for uh, the commissioning of TPS. Let, let yeah. uh, in future what we can. Yeah, that would that would be nice. So that you know these latest algorithms are so strong that it can really give you can comparative analysis. You know, because in the configuration you have an option to you can analyze your data with the the existing the the inter data and the, the calculated by the model. And my last question might be, um, again, you know, the calibration of the GAF chromatic films. Um, I don't know, you calibrated those films on the nominal SSD to get the OD curve or it was on the extended? Uh, because uh, as we know that uh, GAF chromatic film is independent of uh, energy, yes, independent of uh, uh, dose linearity, et cetera. So we calibrated at, uh, at extended SSD. Oh, oh nominal okay. message. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nominal message. Nominal message. Yeah. All right. Uh, because of, uh, it doesn't impact uh, because uh, the calibration of the uh, film just give uh, the optical density curve or make a uh, optical density curve which shows no. the black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. All right. Thanks. You, uh, you got all the answer. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, you just refreshed my memory. As I <laughs> okay, said, it was okay. done a long time. Thanks for asking the question. Nice. Anyone else? There is a question from a participant. Have you try, ever tried to perform in vivo dosimetry using anthropomorphic phantom? Because uh, we don't have an uh, anthropomorphic phantom or inhomogeneous phantom in our facility. I mean, sorry, the last question. Um, the picture you were showing me when you were measuring the output, you know, there was the sketching conditions were not met. And uh, not this one. This is yes. for PDD. No, this is for this PDD. Where you have done very good job where the output was measured, you have shown maybe on the next slides. Yes. Was the it intentional or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to the. Uh, the setup was yeah, the this same. Out, yeah. Setup was the same for the oh, uh, maybe all it's, extended it's, measurements. It, uh, this one. Oh, the, the sketching conditions were there. Yes. You can see here the rice bakes in uh, both sides of the phantom. Yeah, because it's not, not fully visible from here, so it's okay. Okay, okay. Right. Let me let me do. Now you can see. Uh, no. Yeah, there's the whole couch, right? Because it's so far that it, it looks very yeah. small from here. So yeah, yeah. Maybe that's fine. We have done it. I mean, it was just my concern. That, <laughs> yes, so. because uh, we <laughs> we. Let me do because for uh, you know for because you are not using any no, relative factor. Yeah, now yeah yeah it's actually it, it's very far there for yeah yeah yeah. Good. Okay okay okay. All right, thanks. So, so setup was the same throughout the uh, measurement of the beam data. Perfect. Thank you, Harvind Bhai, for such that an question. informative session. Uh, that's it from the chat box question. If anyone has to ask any verbal question, they can ask. Or we, we will conclude the session. Um, I have just one comment uh, regarding the in vivo dosimetry on anthropomorphic phantom. So uh, 
PIAS, the Pakistan Institute of uh, Engineering and Applied Sciences in Islamabad, they have a, a rando phantom and uh, they rarely use it because they don't have any equipment over there. So that phantom is available like for uh, any PIAS students uh, that, that want to do their thesis. So maybe someone from AKU, if they write up a project and send it to PIAS that they can perform the in vivo dosimetry like as a master's project. So that could be a future direction. Just sharing it for those who are interested. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, AKU team, for such a wonderful week. We learned a lot, thanks. Okay, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, I am Asad, uh, here for closing remarks. Thank you very much for all of you to join us. And I would like to just revisit what we have done in the, this week. Starting, uh, we uh, did first topic, care path. The second one is about brachytherapy. And uh, the third one is about the VMAT. And the uh, VMAT, there is a one question was asked by Mr. Khurram Khan about the SIB. Uh, I would like to give comment on that, that uh, we are doing SIB in pelvis cases. As far as head and neck is concerned, uh, it depends on the physician side. So if the physician uh, start that thing and they are comfortable with that, the physics team is ready to prepare the plan for them. Um, the last one is MCU, and uh, today we done the TBI. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, appreciate uh, the hospitals which participated in this uh, week. Around uh, 19 institutes uh, representative has participated in this uh, medical physics week. And uh, there are participants from Nairobi, JPMC, PNRA, NCCI, Shifa International, Combined Military Hospital, Rawalpindi, Ziauddin Hospital, Ahmad Medical Corporation, Qatar, Omega Hospital, University uh, from the India, SQCC uh, from uh, Oman, University of Karachi students, Minar, and Evercare Hospital, Dhaka, and Hewat Fana Specialist University Hospital, and Dao University Hospital. So thank you very much. And uh, we would like to uh, give thanks to all of you who gave the valuable time and uh, spend with us. And I hope that you have learned. And that's what's uh, the theme of this uh, session that uh, sharing the knowledge, what we have. And uh, we will expect from you guys that you will come forward and share what you have. Uh, inshallah, next time we will uh, try to make another session like this. And, and that we would like you guys to participate as a speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Signing off.